So welcome back to Cooking Fun with Joanna, with me, your host, Joanna Hadaraska. I am a holistic nutrition expert and an expert on inflammation and reducing pain naturally. So today in our Cooking Fun with Joanna, we are making Polish hunter stew. And most of you probably don't know that the hunter stew is actually um, an anti-inflammatory food because it has, you know, parsley, it's got cabbage, uh, it's got onions. These are all things that actually go are going to be anti-inflammatory. Uh, it does have some Polish sausage and um, other spices, but the main ingredient is sauerkraut and cabbage. And then you put some of the traditional Polish kielbasa into it. Um, and most of us have gone to the Polish, um, to the Polish deli and we've gotten ours and I can't contain myself. I actually end up eating it. So I only have half of a, um, half of a stick instead of a full one. Well, well they actually have sticks there that you could buy. No, I'm sure they've got, the, you know, the kielbasa, they have, you know, 50 different varieties. <laughs> And when I go back to Chicago, I actually have more varieties to choose from. And there's one that they have that's actually a smoked salmon style. So even though it's made out of pork, it's thinly sliced and it tastes just like smoked salmon. So, but we're not putting that into this one. So today we are going to be making the Polish, um, the Polish hunter stew, which is also known as bigos. So some of the, the recipe actually takes an hour. So we're going to do the most that we can in this time. And it's also better the next day. So all the flavors get to blend together. And sometimes it's better even when you freeze it and then unfreeze it and then have it again. So this is one item that you can make a big pot because that's what we're going to be doing is making, making a pot full. And then um, you can freeze some of it for, for later as well. Uh, but your ingredients are going to be, and I gave, I gave Gina half of my cabbage. So I, I have a half a head of cabbage. So that's going to be fresh. For those who don't want to chop, and I am included in that too, you can just get the plain coleslaw. And that coleslaw will also work. So we're going to be using, I think, a cup of that. Um, I did get the raw sauerkraut from the deli. Uh, and it has to be raw because the only ingredients are sauerkraut or um, white cabbage and salt. And that has all the probiotics and the beneficial bacteria to feed your good biotics in your gut, which is another re reason why it's anti-inflammatory and it's also immune boost. <coughs> then there's dried mushrooms. So we're gonna be using those today too. Uh, some allspice berries, caraway seed, bay leaves, onions, paprika, salt and pepper, and I didn't, I forgot to get the juniper berry and the marjoram, so I'm going to use a drop in, in, or two of each as an essential oil. So that is an option if you don't have the actual dried herbs. Rosemary you might be able to use savory the instead of the marjoram. Pardon me? Gina says the rosemary replaces the juniper berry. Ah, okay. Okay. The... Well, that's good to know. We'll know that for our future. Um, and then tomato paste. I forgot the tomato paste. And then you do want some other kind of meat. And I actually defrosted some some beef to put into there. And we're going to be frying that in the pan and uh, possibly even browning the um, the the bigos. Not the bigos. The bigos is the whole dip. The um, the smoked sausage. In the kielbasa in the pan. So that's why I have a frying pan and I have the big pan. So where we're going to start is, is we're going to finely dice the onions. So now I have to show you how, how it is that I finely diced onions so that it might be easier for you to do. And I'm going to leave this tail on. I'm going to use two onions because onions are also anti-inflammatory in the respect that they feed the, the good um, the good bacteria in your gut. So we want, especially now in the winter, we're going to boost our immune system with the anti-inflammatory cabbage, but also um, feed the good bugs in your gut with 
alliums, which is which are the ingredients in the onions. So we're gonna cut it in half and you can either slice it. No, we're gonna cut slices. And if you wanna make it smaller, then you push the whole uh, onion down <coughs> across and now you can dice it and you want them to be kind of fine. If you have an electric stove, go ahead and turn that on and put your big pot on it. If you've got a gas stove, after I cut this onion, I'm gonna put my two or, two or three tablespoons of olive oil into the pan and turn it on. And as you all know, I'm a very much a just pour it in and eyeball it because I've been doing this for a long time. But you'll want to just put in a, um, a good two tablespoons. Let that heat up a little bit and continue cutting your onions. Two tablespoons of, what did you say? Two tablespoons? Olive oil. Just good old fashioned olive oil. And if you're like me, you can, you know, you can use a big knife to peel that layer of onion off and make sure that you peel off that one, that one layer that has the, like this one layer is always too thick. And then there's that funny sheath. And this one doesn't have it. I already took it off. But that sheath is really slippery. So you might feel like you're you're wasting onion, but you know what? It's really not because you can't use that that top one. And then you're gonna continue just chopping, holding that onion down with your with your hand, keeping your fingers out of the way of the knife, and then at the end here you can dig your nails in just to hold on to that end piece. And sometimes you can't use the whole onion. Make sure you get rid of all the skins and then put that into my pot. And now I realize that my pot is too, is, the heat is too high because it's sizzling. And the oil is almost smoking. You'll want a, a wooden spoon. And now you gotta hurry up and cut. hurry up quick, cut the other onion, right? I'm actually, since my, my, mine is a little bit too hot, I'm going to take it off the heat while I cut the other onion. Bad planning on my part. You want to take off that second layer of the onion skin and two layers under. Make sure that that sheath is off. an onion to cut. You're you're also going to add the caraway seeds into the onions. You actually want the seeds, not caraway powder, if you have. What? 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 Uh, the uh, caraway seeds. I'll get them. I'll get them. I just needed to know how much we needed. Uh, you need a teaspoon. Okay. Maybe a maybe a teaspoon and a half. Okay. When I make sauteed cabbage, that's all I do is I put caraway seeds, onions, and the cabbage, and then some tomato paste when it's done. And it's Is that to put the cabbage in too? Pardon me? Put the cabbage in too, Joanne? No, not yet. 
Okay. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Put the caraway seeds in there. And you want to have the caraway seeds. I just need my measuring. Yeah. And then you're also going to put the allspice, juniper, and the caraway seeds into there. So I already said the caraway seeds. You're gonna put a. You're gonna put a teaspoon of marjoram and paprika into here, and a teaspoon of the um, You're gonna put three allspice berries. Yeah, put one bay leaf in there. Right now, you're just kind of mixing it up, but you're going to try to brown the onions a little bit. Is that the caraway seeds? Oh, what? I need to put bay leaf. Um. Do you have the dried mushrooms? Bay leaves going now. Yeah. The one bay leaf in there. You can put the paprika in here too if you want. Do we have to cut off the mushrooms or just throw them in? You can just throw them in. Well, if you've got the dried mushrooms, you're just throwing them in. You've got the dried mushrooms. And you're doing three and a half ounces. And if you could break them up, that would be better. Uh, just keep your fingers and kind of break them up. Because these things yeah. expand. And we're going to actually have either, you can either use, um, I mean, there'll be some liquid in the, in the, in the kraut. But you'll want to use uh, either some vegetable broth or water. And just kind of keep breaking up this. These mushrooms into smaller bits. They don't have to be like crushed into the powder. You just don't want them to be completely whole. I'm gonna absorb liquid too and expand. And if you got the porcini mushrooms, then it will give you some really nice flavor. All right, we're putting the mushrooms in now too. Yep. Putting it all in there. You're gonna break up the mushrooms just with your hands. So Joanna, did you put the paprika in yet? Uh, I didn't yet, but you can if you want, or you can wait till later. That's no, okay. We just weren't sure if it was. In. I mean, I think you can wait till later, and then you can put it in with the tomato paste. That's okay. Although we, I oh, you put it already. That's good too. So your, so your onions should be starting to brown now. They should be more than translucent. And then if you're going to be using the regular cabbage, then you want to obviously take that out. And I'll show you how to cut it. Because you want a cup of fresh cabbage. But you need to be able to have it cook. So you're gonna... I already cut it in half. And you need a big, big knife and a lot of elbow grease. Take the outside um, leaf off and then cut this, um, you can just remove this stem. It requires a little bit of wedging out the, the knife. 
Agent. And then in order to cut it, you want to put it on a back, so to speak, and just spread the, the cabbage. Whoops, that's going to be too, too thick. Mm -hmm. And just kind of shred it this way. Now, oregano instead of the, the marjoram. Just need the. Uh, better off with savory the, uh, instead of uh, rosemary, yeah. but. Yeah. Try it either way. Paprika, idea, yeah, that's the only I put in. And I'm going to go ahead and pour that cabbage into. Not that I'm really pouring, I'm going to put the cabbage into the, into the pot. I'm going to continue cutting the rest of my cabbage. Okay. You're putting this, the uh, sage in there? Yes. So this is, this is the tedious part, that if you don't feel like cutting the cabbage, just take a cup of the, of the, um, the coleslaw and put it in, because that's, they already shredded it for you, so that you don't have to play with it. Assistant chef today. Assistant, assistant chef. All right, I think that's enough. Right there. When it's a fresh head of cabbage, it actually cuts quite easily. So you can use also the, the rest of that skin and just chop it up or slice it up. And then you're going to put that all in the pot. I'm going to move you over here so you can see what, what mine is doing. It's not a lot right now. My onions are definitely brown. Now you want to mix all this together so that you get the, the cabbage covering the bottom. And you can put some saute here for a couple of minutes. That's what we're going to do. Uh, uh, a half a cup of either water or you're going to put a half a cup of vegetable broth. Okay? And if you want to put the paprika in right now, you can put that in. And you're going to put also a teaspoon of How much vegetable broth are you putting in? Uh, I think it's, it's going to be a half a cup. Because you can always add more later. But if you put too much in, it's too soupy. So start with a half a cup. And I'm going to put vegetable oil. And because I'm so good at... If you don't want to measure it, you're covering the bottom of the, of the pot with about a quarter of an inch of like. So now you're going to actually cover it. Oh, wait, we have to put the sauerkraut into it. How can I get the mo one of the most important ingredients? Now the plan is to open the can or the, yeah, the jar. And because this is the trick that I learned as a kid, you, you stick a knife near the, the top, twist it a bit, and that releases the pressure, and then the jar opens quite quickly. So you're putting a cup of the sauerkraut into the jar as well. So if you've got a container like this, which is 31 ounces, you're basically putting half the jar of the, of the kraut into your cup. Got it? Sauerkraut. You guys following along? Uh, can you can my... find right now with the sauerkraut. We're putting a, a cup of sauerkraut into the pot.
And you said to cover it? And you're going to cover it, yep. This is, the part, this is the part where you get to sit and wait, but you're going to brown some of the other things too. So now that I put some of the liquid in, I'm going to turn the heat up just a teeny tiny bit. And if you can see my flame, it's a teeny bit, it's, it's, it's a bit medium because I really want this to kind of, um, I want this to cook and, and come together and it's going to take a good 15, 20 minutes for the, uh, for the cap to actually cook. But I'm going to blend it all together as best as I can. And if you have your tomato paste, you can put that in here now too. But you're just going to let it sit here. Put a cover on it. We'll check on it every five minutes. You want it to, you want it now basically just um, allow it to simmer. Well, I'll tell you whatever I've got. And I think I'm going to use my glass top, even though it doesn't, it doesn't fit this lid, this pot perfectly. I'm going to do that so, the, so that I can kind of keep an eye on it. And in the meantime, we're going to do some of the other stuff that we're supposed to do, right? Right. I'm going to turn mine up a little bit because mine's not bubbling or sizzling or doing steadily squat. So feel free to turn yours up if you if if yours isn't staying yet. Starting to bubble. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, saute some of the, the meat and the, we're going to do this, the, the kielbasa. And we're going to put that into the pot. So I am going to use beef. You can use, you can use dark meat. You can use, I've never put chicken in mine, so... Um, I can't say whether it'll work or not, but it's all up to you. But you're, what you want to do is cut it into thinner slices. Oh, now I missed part of it. Is this going in a different pan? Yeah. It's going to yeah. go in a different pan, but it's going to go in the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and slice this into into like matchsticks, so they're like half inch pieces of of meat. You're cooking the meat with the. Uh... I'm gonna cook the meat in a in a separate frying pan. Okay, and the, if you, if you want to start heating the frying pan up. That's already done. You can do that. Should I add the kibasi to that too? Not yet. Okay. So the traditional Polish way of, of call it, it's kielbasa. That's that's just sausage. If it's multiple, then it's kielbasa with a Y, which is like a, I don't know what it is in, in English. I only know it in Polish. Um, is just kielbasa. So we're going to put the kielbasa into the pot or into the pan after we um, cook the, the meat. And my suggestion is to put a little bit of ghee or some butter onto the pan to give it some extra little flavor. And I found this liquid pourable ghee. So I'm going to use that. Oh, it would help if I turn the, the pan on, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Well, this time, this time is one of those times. I need to get with my own program, right? Sure. So 
But yeah, I'm gonna show the long view. So I'm heating up the, the ghee, some of this liquid ghee in. And I'm gonna just let that heat up a little bit. You want to make sure that the pan is heated well enough that things won't stick to it. If it's not heated up adequately, things will stick and it's not pleasant. You basically want a half a pound of whatever meat you're, you're going to make and put that into that pan. So I'm going to go ahead and put my meat in, and then while I my hands from the meat, and then I'm going to cut the kielbasa. You have one, one sausage blank. It's called the kielbasa. So it's just that a, it ends with an A. Make sense? Yeah. So that's the boring part. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to put the beef away because I don't need that anymore. But we're going to cut the kielbasa in half. So if you got the traditional kielbasa, basically you're going to use like seven, I guess this is seven inches of kielbasa. <clears throat> so either just make it in half, cut it in half moons, I'm going to actually cut it into um, quarters. Because this one doesn't necessarily need to be cooked, you can eat it straight up, that's the beauty of the smoked sausage. That's why you, when you buy when you buy it, you got to put it in the back of your car so you don't need it on the ride home. Uh, well, no, that's why you buy extra. <laughs> that's why you buy extra. That's why I bought the, the, the small stick. Home. I don't care where I am; it never makes it home unopened. That's that's why I bought the, the small sticks and the and the regular kielbasa. So I can have oh, you, got, you got the kielbasa. What's that? You got the kielbasa. I guess so. Yeah, the, the, the thin they're sticks. Like, they're they... like fingers? Yeah. Yeah, those are called cabanosa. Those are one of my favorites. So as you can see, my, my beef is starting to brown, which is what we want. I think I'm going to need like a spatula to flip it. But you actually want to brown it a little bit. So you don't want it just, you know, cooked. You want it to actually brown. Well, I got it up to six. So I'm going to check on my... So now this is actually starting to... to um, Boil. Cook. Starting to boil. I'm going to go ahead and mix it, which would be a good idea. According to the recipe, it takes a, it's supposed to take a full hour to cook. But of course, we're not going to do that because we, we want to be done already. But you want to make sure that, you know, all the spices blend, which might be tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to blend that all together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, um, take this meat, since mine's all brown, and I'm going to put that into the, into the pot. Just let those flavors kind of blend together. I'm not necessarily going to mix it, but 
Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, heat that back up and put the, the kibasa in. And I want you to just leave it to brown on one side and then the other. So it's not gonna necessarily be a long time. Uh, we're gonna put the chicken in the mouth. It's still going to continue to pop, and we're going to still use the pan for the smoke. If you look under our CP dot, the uh, piece of meat is there. There we go. Now, did you get it? So now that you have your kielbasa cut up into um, small, small slices, put that into that heated pan yeah, where you good. just had the, the meat. We're going to brown that before we put it into the pot. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep the ends because those are, I think, my most favorite. Okay, the glossy is going to go. And I want to make sure that the, um, that the kibasa is all laying on the bottom of the pan because you want to brown the, the, the both sides. And you'll definitely want a spatula when it comes time to flip. But you want to make sure that every piece of kibasa is actually on the on your foot or your frying pan, and they're all laying flat. If you can push them closer to the, whoops, I have a couple here that are misbehaving. They're standing up. I got them all laying flat. But you want these on kind of medium, on a medium heat, brown, brown the kibasa. And then we're going to flip them over in a minute or two. While we're doing that, while we're waiting there, I'm going to mix everything together in the, whoops, in the other container. And watch out if, you're, if you've got your lid, because it can be hot. And the steam is going to be hot, so make sure you're not standing right over it, especially with glasses. Next thing's going to be the kibasi. So mine's going to look a little bit different than all of yours because I forgot the tomato paste. Uh, looks good. So mine's going to be a little bit different than yours too because I forgot the tomato paste. That looks, that to me looks, looks pretty good. That's what it looks like without the tomato paste. And you can see it's kind of steaming. Yep. You can, if you can see, it's it's, bo it's boiling the liquid below, so there's still a little bit of there, which is good because that's going to steam cook the rest of it. We cook the bacon after we do the uh, kibasi. I keep putting bacon in the recipe, but if, the, if you have it, why not add, it? add some good good facts to it as well? Which makes it a little bit heartier. Aren't you forgetting something? You have a four legged vacuum. She did it all back. Four legged vacuum cleaner. Uh, as you can see the, the kibasa. It's starting to it's starting to kind of curl, which means that it's starting to brown on the other side. So I'm gonna to try to hold this while I flip flip some over. And that's what you want is now you gotta flip them all over so that you brown the other side. Got it? Yeah. This is gonna be the painstaking part where you have to it's almost like you have to do each one separately. But we time, right? I mean, you might be able to take a 
a spatula full and flip it. But then you'll flip some and not the others. He's brown on both sides. Excellent. You're a special enemy. So you can go ahead and add that into the into the pot with all the drippings. Because there are definitely some drippings, and those are that's what gives it the extra. <laughs> Who's also Polish, and she said she made big on some you know over the holidays, and she said the the secret is that you actually cook the cabbage, the kraut, three times. You have to heat it up, cool it down, heat it up, cool it down, heat it up, cool it down, then add the regular cabbage and make the rest of it. And I thought, well, we're not, we don't have enough time for all that. And I wanted to share that with you in case you do want to try it out that way another time. And then if you have your bacon, you can cut that up and chop that up into small, dice it into small cubes. And this is what my, my sausage looks like. So this is what the kielbasa looks like. It should be nice and crisp, kind of pan seared, crispy on the one side. So, yeah, you're going to remove the lid from the, from the beagle. And then you're going to pour all of the contents into the beagle. And go ahead and spread, and go ahead and put all the all the drippings on there too. And then if you're making the bacon, put that in brown loaves too. And then put it all back in the in the pot. What's the flour for? There is no flour. Oh, okay. Oh, you just bought it for Gina. The flour was for Gina so that she could make stuff that's uh, with the Polish, with the Polish wheat. Okay. And the Polish wheat is not inflammatory. So I got the flour not for this recipe, but just because it's a Polish European flour. And the Europeans don't allow ge genetically modified wheat. And it's the genetically modified wheat that is inflammatory because every time they genetically modify it in the in the laboratory, it exponentially increases the the yeah. gluten in the wheat. But because it's also not naturally pollinated and cross pollinated and cross um, cross grown then it acts like a foreign substance in the body. And the body will create inflammation to fight out those foreign invaders. And that wheat becomes a foreign invader. So the European flour, I just got that so that you could make things with non-inflammatory wheat. Right. So it's yeah, not for this recipe. 
Because it's different the way, you know, they used to just cross pollinate everything naturally, but, you know, that takes, uh, you know, it takes too long for, it takes you know, work. everybody's in such a rush that now they have to do it in a lab, which is not good. Well, yeah, th but they only do that in the U.S., which is why there's so much, um, there's so much inflammation and there's right. so many health issues. It's because you know, I mean, it's different when you naturally cross pollinate plants, but when you artificially do it. Right. Yeah, and that's the problem. It becomes it, it's something that the body doesn't recognize, and it, it it responds with inflammation because it looks at that wheat, that genetically modified wheat, like a toxin. Yeah. And we don't want toxins. Hey, Joanna, are we putting the bacon in uh, that frying pan next? Yes. yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you're going to fry that up, and then you're going to put that into the pot. Yes. And then, and then we're kind of heating and not waiting for it to be completely, like, completely, completely ready. Because we don't have patience around here. But it takes, you know, we've got 15 minutes left in the class. Everything should be kind of blended. This is probably going to be mostly cooked, but it probably needs still another 20 minutes. I'm also going to try the sauerkraut just as it is. I want to, I want to remember what real sauerkraut tastes like. This one's the way it's supposed to be. It's actually good. It's probably sweet. Mm. That's really good. And that's the way it should be. You probably can see it. Right. The ingredients. Look at that. Just like, here we are. Cabbage and salt. And this is, hmm. it's actually really sweet and tart, all at the same time, and she's almost saying. tender. So she's eating it straight out of the jar. Best way to eat it. All right, can you straight yeah. out of the jar? Mm. Look at Who would have thought that that one thought was yummy? So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a bowl. And I'm going to take a little bit of my adigos and see how it tastes. My suggestion is to use like the big serving fork to pull it out. So I'm going to take them out. And next thing I'm going to mix it first. And this is where, you know, you want to check to see if there's still any liquid at the bottom. You don't want to, you don't want to brow in the bottom. But I'm going to just double check and see how this is tasting so far. And how the consistency is. And then I'll know how much longer we need to keep it on the, on the stove. I gotta try to get, grab some of the pieces of uh, of cabbage, not just the the crop. And then I'm gonna cover that back up again. So anybody is anybody ready to try this, or is it just me? Just you. All right. Well, I'm gonna wait till I, I'm gonna blow on mine quite a bit because it's really, really hot. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of it. Oh, I can't wait. ours is still cooking away. Ours is too. Mine is too. I didn't stop cooking. I'm just cheating. I'm taking a sample to to see how cooked it is and give you an idea of how much longer it really needs. Maybe it does need a whole hour, and we've only been doing it for 45 minutes. That's a lie. That's a lie. It definitely tastes good. I'll tell you that it's very tasty. 
But it probably needs that extra 10 minutes. Okay. All mm. right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. I got to say, it's pretty darn good. Love these two. Did anybody else try theirs? I am. It's good. Oh, yeah. right now. Can you can you the test of the raw cabbage is still a little tough, and you want this to be a little softer than what it is. Is that's good? But the flavors are delicious, aren't they? Yeah, the flavors are really good. Yeah. I'm adding a little bit more of the marjoram and the juniper berry, and I don't think it needs any extra salt. What do you guys think? No. I didn't put any salt in. No, we didn't put any salt. Well, because the sauerkraut has salt in it. But I wanted to see if it needed it, and it really doesn't. No, that's good. So, so I'm going to pour, since mine is kind of a little dried out, and I'm going to keep it going, I'm going to actually pour a little bit more of the, um, a little bit more broth into it. I want it to, I want it to steam some more. And it was starting to dry out, in which case I'd have burnt vegos, and I don't want burnt vegos. It probably needs another 10, 15 minutes to really get everything tender. So more, you know. And I'll show you what mine looks like. At least in the pot. So mixing it all together. Making sure it's all kind of stirred. But I want a little bit of that liquid still in there so that the rest of it kind of steeps in and keeps cooking. But you don't want it to be soupy. Did you guys add your bacon yet? Yes. All right. There's what mine looks like. Oh, awesome. I shall. Next time we make it, we'll get more, more kibasi, get bigger chunks. You can either make bigger chunks, smaller chunks. It's all a preference. Same thing with like with the onions, you know? You cut it all to the, what your preference is. There's no specific, it has to be a certain way. And it might be, you know, like I, I chopped in the... Um, the, the raw cabbage, it might actually be cooking faster if you're using the coleslaw because they're already shredded into smaller pieces. True. Yeah. So, those are some of the shortcuts. If you don't feel like chopping a head of cabbage or half a head, actually that was a quarter of a head, then you just buy the coleslaw and dump it in. Simple. Cut the package for it in. Oh. It always looks better on a photo, right? Boy, is it steaming. So who cheated or who cheated? Who uh who tried theirs? And wants I did. To... It's really good. It's very good. Excellent. So how do you make how do you do selfie shots on your on your camera when you're on Zoom? I do what? Selfies. How do you do selfie shots on your camera when you're on Zoom? I, have no clue. I think you can turn. Right, but there should be a timer, and I'm looking for the timer. No, I don't want life. I just want I want the timer. Where did the timer go? I guess you can't do that. You can't do it unless you actually open your phone. Yeah. No, that still didn't do it. Hmm. Okay, 
I don't know. There's got to be something else that I'm missing. Oh, there it is. All right. There's the timer button because I want to time me eating it. <laughs> right? Back up, back up, back. <laughs> Good. Good. My timer thing didn't work. Three seconds. That's what you want to do. And then, of course, I got all that on, on here. So, so I just did the next month, um, next month, next, uh, our next month class. I've got that all figured out. It's going to be saying hi. crispy braised chicken legs or chicken thighs. You could do chicken breast too with aromatic vegetables. So, it's going to have some. Um, leeks, carrots, potatoes, butternut squash, and cauliflower, some celery, garlic, thyme, and chicken stock, and parsley. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Oh, that's the last thing I forgot to tell you. We, we're supposed to chop some parsley to put into here. So if you have time to do that, add the parsley. Parsley. Because that's also anti-inflammatory, in case you didn't know. Yeah. It's got fresh fresh, fresh out of my beans. garden. Awesome. I saw, I saw parsley in my garden. Excellent. Next time you come over, I'll have you uh, bring me some. Yeah. If you could, that would be awesome. But the parsley is also anti-inflammatory. It's a kind of a phytonutrient. So it helps to fight off the free radicals that we create from stress. And none of us have any stress. So we need lots and lots of parsley but that's that's in the in the in the dish as well i just forgot to mention it and forgot to chop it so if you want to take a bunch of uh of parsley and add it in it'll just add enhance the anti-inflammatory properties i'm going to turn mine off and just let it kind of simmer and and uh and rest and i hope you enjoy the class today and if you have any questions or suggestions of, uh, or questions about what we did today, you can contact me, Joanna Hodorowska, nutritioninmotion.net. And we will see you in two weeks where we're going to make crisp braised um, chicken thighs with aromatic vegetables. Sounds good. Yeah, it's going to be good. Have we, have we not made anything good so far? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna keep up, keep going on that trend. So, and I think I'm gonna stick with every every two weeks, and we'll just do it every two weeks. Or would you prefer every first and third? Either.